£2,000 to fill a home with audio and surround sound setup. Let's see what that gets us in the world of Sonos. Today's the day. I'm designing the perfect Sonos home setup for my brother. So after having just bought a house as a previous flat owner, my brother is currently in the process of designing his new home. Now, as we all know, moving house is very expensive. And if money was no object at all, then this would probably be a slightly different video. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So instead, we're going to be working with a very respectable but fairly tight budget of £2,000 to build the perfect Sonos home, getting audio into as much of the house as possible. And I'll also be sharing some tips along the way on how to choose between different models for those of you out there who are in a similar situation right now. Now, before we get stuck in, there are a few challenges and priorities my brother has set for me. So these are things that I need to consider and think about throughout this process. So first of all, number one, he wants a Sonos home, not a Sonos room. So I can't blow the budget on one room and leave nothing for the rest of the house. Uh, number two, the house has a decent sized back garden, which no doubt will be used for barbecues and parties in the summer. So he will need to be able to take his audio outside. And finally, Number three, he wants the addition of these speakers to really enhance and enrich the time that he's spending at home. He wants his movies to be much more immersive, audio to be more accessible, and an ecosystem that's simple enough for anyone to make full use of, which is actually why I've decided to go for a Sonos setup for him. After having the experience of testing plenty of home audio systems from a variety of different brands, what keeps drawing me personally back to Sonos is that it's super simple to get set up and working properly. And he also loves my Sonos setup in my own home. Now, he likes the fact that I have full control of my setup within the app, which is very straightforward and easy to use and navigate. And Sonos are often regarded as the front runners in this area. I mean, all he really cares about is a wireless system that just works seamlessly. Also, he is a very avid Apple Music subscriber and a big plus for Sonos and Apple Music is that Apple Music is built in natively into the Sonos app, which no one else does. And you also have AirPlay 2 and Spotify Connect if that's your preferred listening option. Now, another advantage is that Sonos are always adding more speakers to their lineup all the time and expanding into new categories. So it's a system that I know he could always add to over time as money allows. And no, this is not a Sonos sponsored video. I just know that a lot of our audience are big Sonos fans. And of course, there are plenty of other more expensive and more affordable options and brands out there. So if you do like this video, let us know what brand you'd like us to do next. And we could even cover your very own home. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the floor plan and we're gonna start with the ground floor. So we're gonna start by focusing on the living room, which is likely where most of us are spending the majority of our budget on our home audio. So as you can see, his living room is a fairly decent size and it takes up the whole width of the house at the back. Now the previous owners had originally had this room entirely designed as a lounge space. So they had sofas on each wall, a coffee table in the middle, and the TV on the far wall with the kitchen completely closed off. But like myself, he's a massive fan of open plan living. And rather than having a dining table cramped in the kitchen, he's decided to open up this space, extend the kitchen surface to create a breakfast bar, and then have the dining table in the living room. Obviously, this change now makes the living room a multi-purpose space for both dining and entertaining and works nicely as he wanted to create a cozier lounge space for watching movies, TV shows and gaming, which will be naturally separated off by a corner sofa. So had he not decided to make this change, I think I would have definitely got away with adding a Sonos Arc soundbar that would have really filled this open space. But now he's intentionally made it a little smaller and a little bit cozier. And because he's not planning on watching TV from the dining table right at the other end of the room, we don't need something as big and as powerful as the Arc. And it actually allows more room in the budget for other rooms. So with all of that in mind, we've now got to choose between the Sonos Beam or the Sonos Ray as the soundbar choice. Now I could save myself a little bit of money here to have a bigger budget for the rest of the house. But on the other hand, I know that he's going to be spending a lot of time in this space. And the Sonos Beam Gen 2 is such a massive step up from the Ray with the added bonus of Dolby Atmos. So I think I'm going to go for the Beam Gen 2. And because this is going to be a very well used space, watching movies, binging Netflix series and gaming and so on, I'm gonna to have to go for it 
go all out and get the Sub Mini and two Sonos 1SLs as rears to complete this lounge setup. Now I'm going Sub Mini over the Sub Gen 3 because in all honesty, I think the Gen 3 will be overkill in this space. And I'm thinking about trying to save some money for the rest of the house. And whilst we're on this topic, I have actually done a full Sonos Sub Gen 3 versus Sub Mini comparison on our channel up here somewhere if you guys want to dive deeper there. For the rears, there's no need to get two Sonos Ones as we've already got voice assistant with the beam. So I'm saving a little bit of money here with the SLs. Now, of course, let's not forget that you could opt for a pair of IKEA Symphonist speakers, which might come in handy for us a little bit later down the line. But I think that overall, he'll prefer the Ones in this space. Are you gonna add in stands to the budget? Sam, I would have done, but I've already thought about this. He's already got a unit which the Sonos 1SLs can sit perfectly on and they'll be at the correct listen height. So there's no need to add those in. Okay, so with the most expensive room out of the way and with less than half the budget left, let's move into the kitchen. Now, to be honest with you, I would love to add some Sonos in ceiling speakers here with the Sonos amp. And a couple of reasons why. Firstly, because I do find that our family, like most families, typically spends a lot of time in the kitchen. Not only when we're just relaxing at each other's homes, but for parties or having people over, we always end up gathering in the kitchen. So it's a space that I know will be very well used and could definitely benefit from them. And secondly, because ceiling speakers are of course out of the way, they're discreet and you haven't got a speaker in the way whilst you're trying to cook. But of course, we need to remember that we're on a budget here. And especially as I've just spent most of it on the living room, there probably won't be anything left if we did go down the ceiling speaker route with the amp and then the cost of the inside installation process and so on. So instead, I think that we need to think tactically here. He wants something that's going to fill the space, but don't forget, I also need to think about how he's going to entertain people in the summer outside in the garden. So with all of that in mind, I think I'm gonna go for the Sonos Move. It's definitely powerful enough to fill this kitchen space and it's the biggest of the Sonos portable speakers, which would be perfect for the garden space out the back when he's hosting parties. And to be fair, if he has got everyone over for dinner or even if he just wants to listen to some music in the living room, then he could always bring the move into the living room next to the dining table. So I think overall, this is a fantastic addition. It's really versatile as part of the setup and it's a great sounding speaker too. Much more powerful than you'd expect from a portable speaker. And actually guys, a nice little tip to add in here is that as he has got the beam in the living room playing the TV audio, he can actually group the TV audio to the move so he could listen to the TV audio, say the news for example, in the kitchen or in the summer, you could take the move outside so you're listening to the TV audio out in the garden. Okay, so that ticks off the downstairs and the garden space. So now let's head upstairs and see what we can do with the budget that we've got left. So the spare bedroom is going to be a guest room. So I'm not too worried about this room for now. And sorry in advance to any guests going over to stay, but it's every man for himself right now. Instead, I think we need to prioritize the master bedroom and the office, which is where he'll be spending the majority of his time upstairs. Now, because he's got the main gaming, TV, movie watching setup downstairs in the lounge, I'm not gonna go too crazy up here. And of course, we've not got loads of money left. So I could add something like the Sonos Ray soundbar underneath the TV in the bedroom, which I probably would do if we had more budget left. But instead, I'm going to go for a Sonos Roam. And very importantly, I'm going to get him the wireless charger as well, which for me personally is an essential accessory for the Roam. Again, a few reasons for doing so, but primarily because the Roam is of course Sonos's most portable speaker, which means that he can also use this in the bathroom for his 6 a.m. karaoke shower sessions. And having voice assistant built in and like the Roam SL means that he doesn't need to take his phone into the bathroom as he can use voice control for playback. Now the charger is hugely important because there is nothing more annoying than going to use a speaker and finding out that it's dead. So I think this would be a great addition to the setup. He can leave it docked in his bedroom 80% of the time and that means that essentially it's a normal speaker in that room charged all of the time. But when he wants to take it into the bathroom or on trips out for the day, he's got that option and it's charged and ready to go. And also because the Roam is Bluetooth compatible, it means that he doesn't have to worry about always having an internet connection. So it's the perfect travel companion. Oh, and another quick tip. Let's say, for example, that the whole family is at the house. I'm watching a movie with my brother in the lounge with the Beam and the 1SLs. My parents are in the kitchen listening to some music on the move, and his partner is upstairs listening to a podcast on the Sonos Roam. 
If we finish the movie and we want to listen to the same music coming from the move, then he can just hold the play pause button on the beam and it will then cycle through the different available audio playing out of the speakers within his Sonos ecosystem until it lands on the music and now the beam setup and the move will be playing the same thing. And then likewise, if his partner gets done listening to a podcast, she can do the same thing on the roam and start listening to the same music upstairs. So with all that said, I'm left with the final room in the house, the office, which is a space that I know he will be spending a lot of time working in. Now, because it is quite a small space, but somewhere that's going to be used every day, I'm thinking that we need this speaker to really blend into the room. And as space is at a premium, having a speaker that's serves another purpose like the Gen 2 Symphonis Glamp would be perfect. Now of course the other alternative here would be to go for a single Sonos One which would work just as well but I'm a big fan of the Symphonis Glamp so I've got one at my house and I know that he thinks it looks cool too so I reckon that will be the perfect addition to the home office. Now, admittedly, this does take us slightly over budget, but he needed a lamp in the office anyway, which would have cost 50 pounds or so. So if we actually add that back onto the total budget that I had to start with, then we're actually sitting at just seven pounds more than my initial 2000 pounds for a complete Sonos home setup. So there we have it. That's how I'll be spending my brother's £2,000 budget on the perfect Sonos Home, or 2007, but was £7 between friends. And to be fair, all things considered, I actually think this is a great home setup and it ticks all of the boxes I mentioned that he wanted at the beginning of the video. So let's do a quick recap. Number one, we've got Sonos throughout the house, not just in one room. Number two, we've got the audio covered outside with the Sonos Move. And also when it's a nice morning and he doesn't want to annoy the neighbors, he can also take the Sonos Roam outside to listen to some music or a podcast or whatever he wants to. And finally, number three, the addition of these speakers will no doubt make movie nights far more immersive, take his music listening to the next level, and having two portable speakers within the home gives him plenty of freedom and flexibility to take his audio around the home, as well as, of course, having the option to group all of his speakers to share audio around the home, which would be perfect for hosting parties. And not forgetting that this setup is a great foundation to build upon and add to over time with new or existing Sonos products as and when necessarily. Oh, and final quick tip, speaking of hosting parties and having people over, because Sonos benefits from AirPlay 2 and Spotify Connect, your family and friends don't actually need the Sonos app to take control of the music. So should they not like your DJ and for whatever reason, they can take control. And actually, the more I think about it, it's probably best that you don't tell them that one. Anyway, be sure to comment down below if you guys have enjoyed this one and what you'd spend your money on if you were in a similar position to me. And who knows, maybe we could even take your home designs and do something very similar and perhaps make a little bit of a series out of this. Let us know your thoughts down below. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.